Hi there. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about she moved on to a new boyfriend. Hmm. Well, a lot of times after a breakup, we find out that an ex has moved on to somebody else. Now, sometimes that happens right away after a breakup and it's brutal and it's so painful. I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's a while later. And believe it or not, some people are still hurting over a breakup even years later. And when you find yourself in that situation, you really want to take a look at your own attachment issues and your family history and what happened to you in your childhood, because sometimes it's more about you than it is about that relationship or the other person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So today we've got an interesting email coaching, and this is from a guy who is in his early, early 20s, okay? Now, the thing that makes this situation so unusual is that he dated this girl for like two and a half years, but they started dating when they were teenagers, okay? So they start dating as teenagers and they broke up like two years ago and he's still struggling with this breakup. And I felt bad seeing somebody go through this because he was essentially a kid in high school and still beating himself up over mistakes he did in his first real relationship. Mm -hmm. When we have those relationships in our formative years, when we're discovering the world, figuring out who we are, those can be so much more meaningful. They can feel like almost relationships with family of how, how much significance they have to your life and how you see the world. That first relationship really does give you so much perspective. Yep. So I got an email coaching from this guy. And like I said, he's only in his very early, early 20s. And he was with her for two and a half years. Okay. He said it was his first relationship and only relationship. He hasn't dated anyone since the breakup in two years. Mm. And I feel bad for him. You know, this is a time in your life where you should really be exploring dating a lot of different people and not looking at it as a situation where like, oh, I was married with kids with her. We were in our 30s mm -hmm. and I mistreated her and neglected her. He was in high school at the time. OK, so he goes on to say the year we broke up was a tough year for me. I was given more shifts at work and doing courses and my family was beginning to have financial issues. Due to this, we were having issues. So we had a lot of issues going on. You can imagine he's either a junior or a senior here in high school, and he's still ruminating over something from several years ago, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. I was becoming more stressed with work and school and wasn't able to be emotionally available to her. I'd become more withdrawn from her intimately and unable to meet her needs and how many 18 year olds be here talking like this you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean like no 18 year olds are yeah. talking like this now i know he's a couple of years older mm -hmm. but how many 20 year olds are talking like this yeah. or 21 year olds are talking like this mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen right that's true we're just not born with those tools of how to make a relationship work yeah you know a lot of it is trial and error especially in those first years that we're dating somebody and mm -hmm. first time dating somebody figuring it all out Sure, it really does help if you have very nurturing parents, if you have a secure attachment style, if you know what it's like to depend on somebody, but also be independent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's just out here thrown into a relationship at a really young age trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel bad that he's still beating himself up mm -hmm. and stuck. Right. He says, I was unable to communicate this work with her because I've always struggled with communicating my feelings and thoughts. She broke up with me through text on the weekend before my midterm exams. She called me in the middle of the night saying she loved me and wanted to get back, but said I had to go meet her at her house. Sadly, I was un unable to do so between exams and work, plus having to hel help out my family financially at the time. I mean, think about the burden on him. He's not even, you know, 
19, 20 years old at this point, and he's got to help with his family's financial problems. Mm -hmm. He's got exams. You know what I mean? Like this is this is a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a one sided equation. You know, on her end, too, she's equally as young. You know, yeah. she's equally figuring stuff out. If I think about how I was when I was around that age, <laughs> it was a wreck. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. So, you know, just the fact that he's been able to reflect on this, even being a couple of years older, is incredible. You know, the fact that he's really thinking about this. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and I give him a lot of credit. I just feel bad that he's beating himself mm -hmm. up still. Yeah, there's people three times his age <laughs> <laughs> that I've worked with that are still struggling to to really have those self-reflective skills. It just seems like he might be taking it to an extreme. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. He says, I didn't go to her. And when I tried it a week later, she started seeing someone else at work and it was too late. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's a little red flag for me. Mm -hmm. A week later, she's already seeing someone else after a two and a half year relationship. A week later, or was she talking to this guy beforehand? You know, I had already suspected, come on. A and week later is awfully close. I'm also thinking at that age, there's a lot of emotional immaturity of in course. general. So I'm wondering on her end, if that was, you know, you need to come here tonight. And if you don't, then that means you don't care about me. That means you don't love me. Mm -hmm. And then I have a reason to be angry at you. I have a, a reason because you really didn't try or put an effort. So now I'm going to be vengeful and do this thing with somebody else a week later. Exactly. You know, and I'm not saying that that's how she's thinking. I'm just saying that that's probably how a young, emotionally immature person might take the situation. Sure. Remember, she's a teenager at this point, mm -hmm. right? He says, this sent me down a desperate frenzy, doing all sorts of dumb things that just pushed her away from me. Since then, I would asked myself why I hadn't gone to her. You, can, you hear the regret here? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guilt, a lot of regret, and feeling like this, the way he handled it, is the reason they're not together today. But I don't think that's the case because we're dealing with somebody who's extremely young. Okay, this isn't somebody who's you know, 35 years old and looking back, you know, mm -hmm. how we acted as a 35 year old. You're a teenager at this point, yeah. you know? He says, after my exams, I lessened the shifts. I was working to study more. I dropped down to a general pathway and financially things started to get better. For the next year and a half, I'd have to see her and her boyfriend regularly after the breakup. Mm -hmm. so that's brutal. Right? I don't know how he had to see her. Maybe at school. Maybe they were at school together. I'm not sure. Yeah. After the first six months from the breakup, they'd stop hanging around after he finished work. So maybe they worked together. He worked with this guy. Also around this time, Nicole emails me saying she cheated on me. Mm. So this guy is beating himself up for years over the way he handled the breakup. Meanwhile, when they were in the relationship, she was cheating on him. It just doesn't seem fair at all, right? Mm -hmm. Like th he's really struggling here. She's moved on. And meanwhile, who knows what she was doing in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And I know if Margaret were here, she would say, where's your anger? <laughs> she would be questioning that. You know, anger really is that self-protective emotion. And I'm seeing a lot of self anger here where he's upset with himself frustrated with himself for things he didn't do for dumb things he did and that to me is a sign of depression i was just know? gonna say it. yeah i was gonna i'm worried he's depressed too yeah so it's just things to think about of course we can't diagnose him in this video or anything like that but these are just some things that we're seeing yep. you know it it seems like there's some deep messages of i'm not good enough i mess up i make mistakes i'm broken those are just some of the themes that I'm pulling from some of what he's saying so far. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's putting way too much pressure on himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes on to say during the rest of the year, she would talk to me from time to time. I graduated from school. I worked on getting a new job and getting things like my license and trying to figure out what career I wanted to do. I mean, this guy didn't even have his license yet. And he's beating himself up still. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how young you were when you got your license, right? I hadn't seen her much since quitting. Every now and again, I'd hear things about her. 
During the relationship, we were physically intimate. However, I struggled things with communication, setting boundaries. I would let her do what she wanted to, so I wouldn't seem controlling. I also struggled with affection when other people would be around. This led to her feeling like she was alone, like she couldn't come to me with problems instead of having to go to who would be her next boyfriend. Mm. Here's the guilt again. Mm -hmm. Basically, I did this. I pushed her into another guy because I wasn't good enough or my behavior wasn't enough for her. And there's a lot of people pleasing here too. You know, I let her do whatever she wanted so she wouldn't think that I'm controlling. You know, I had a, a coworker who said something that really stuck with me. She says, when you put people on a pedestal, that's exactly where they are, mm -hmm. on a pedestal, away mm -hmm. from you, distant, far, you can't connect with them. Yeah. And so it seems like he really did that to her. He really saw her as this role in his life that was so important that he was willing to abandon his own needs, his own wants, and, and be inauthentic to himself. Yeah. A little bit more here. The reason I'm writing to you is yesterday, upon writing this, I stumbled across her Facebook profile. Stumbled or stalked? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> stalked. It's just how I stumbled upon my fridge at, at 3 a.m. <laughs> you were stalking your celery. <laughs> In my friend's suggestion list, I saw she had a different bo boyfriend with the profile pic being one where she is kissing him. This somehow made me hurt again, making me realize I hadn't moved on. I've just been keeping myself busy to avoid dealing with the pain and feelings to move on. I'm looking for help to move on and to be able to make a relationship work, to be more confident around women and also be comfortable to date again. I hope this is enough to help. Okay. Well, anytime you see your ex with somebody new, it still stings a bit. I was gonna say that. You know, I could see that he's assigning meaning to a feeling that he had saying, okay, just because I, I'm having a reaction to seeing an ex kissing somebody else, that means that I haven't moved on or processed anything. I don't think that's necessarily true. Do I think he has still quite a bit to process? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. You know, you haven't dated, at least from what I could tell, in the last couple of years. And I think you've got to forgive yourself for some things that you see as mistakes in a very early relationship, your first relationship. And the amount of growth that you've had and be, been able to articulate already at 20 or 21 or whatever he is at this point, I mean, I think he's showing a lot more maturity than people twice his age. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I think you got to kind of let your let this go and forgive yourself and understand you guys started dating a te teenage, as teenagers. Even if you had been a perfect boyfriend, <laughs> you probably still wouldn't be together. Mm -hmm. And she might have even cheated on you even if you were the perfect boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much integrity she has. Exactly. We don't know, mm -hmm. you know, but he's blaming this all on himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to go back to that. Where is his anger? You know, it seemed like he wasn't as upset about the cheating. In yeah. fact, it seems like at this point he would even still really be willing to make things work, you know, without addressing that portion of it. You know, I, I would really like to see him grow as a self-confident person to say, hey, this is what I want out of a relationship. I deserve to be treated well. And this is what being treated well looks like for me. It seems like that was never there. And it, it also seemed on her end that she was saying that she felt disconnected from him. Mm -hmm. I also wonder, had he set more boundaries, had he been truer to himself, if that could have also helped their connection? Yeah, I mean... For me, it keeps coming back to their age and their inexperience mm -hmm. and yet putting this huge responsibility on you like you're, you know, 40 years old with two kids with this person. When you guys were teenagers in high school and you were trying to help your family with financial problems. I mean, what teenager has to help their parents financially? Mm -hmm. that, that level of stress alone. Right. You know, how many teenagers can handle that alone? Yeah. That's a that's a big weight on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we don't know what to extent that was, but he brought it up several times, so it tells me that it was, you know, pretty significant at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
I think you really just want to look at being reasonable and having reasonable expectations for yourself. What you would consider to be reasonable expectation for most teenagers, think about it. Like, it sounds to me like you probably were more mature than many teenagers would have been in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so I think you kind of have to forgive yourself and say, okay, I made some mistakes, but that doesn't mean we would still be together. Because I think there's part of that to the story mm -hmm. that he still believes that, mm -hmm. that you probably still wouldn't be together, even if you had been a perfect boyfriend, because she could maybe not be ready to marry or settle down until she's 35. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, exactly. And you have to remember, this is the only experience that you've had in a relationship. And so right now, this has become your baseline. This has become your standard. And I know that we've been kind of talking in a way that we can see that you're beating yourself up. We really want to build you up. I'm personally very excited about your journey moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, like Craig said, you have a lot of time on your hands. You have a lot to explore and discover, learn about yourself, learn about what you like, learn about what you want. And I, I really do encourage you to kind of get into this curious mindset about the world. Mm -hmm. My bet is that the more experiences you have out there, the more you will recognize what it feels like to be treated with respect, to be seen and heard and connect with people in a different way. And now that you have learned and reflected on this relationship, you are able to bring a more mature self to your next relationship. And I think that's something really beautiful. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said there. And, you know, I think that for you, um, don't look for a relationship right now. Just look to date and go on dates and meet new people. Because it seems to me you value commitment and connection so much that you could wind up getting hurt easily again, right? I think it would be good for you to go on a lot of different dates with a lot of different people to see what it's like, to see what you're looking for, what you're attracted to, what you're not attracted to, what's important to you. You don't know those things yet. You've only had one relationship, date, see what else is out there. And I'm willing to bet that once you have a lot more experiences, you won't put so much weight on how you handled this. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And really, really, really work on those core messages that you're telling yourself. And then it seems like you continue to tell yourself about not being good enough, about being broken, about being this failure. Those things aren't true. The fact that you're questioning that makes it not true. I would be a lot more concerned if you weren't asking yourself those questions and just moving on, not learning anything through your experiences. What I'm seeing here is a young man who's reflective, who's a deep thinker, and who has a lot of potential and brings a lot to the table. I agree. So do your best to have some empathy and compassion for yourself and start to explore new experiences and different people and, you know, obviously we don't need to know the details of the cheating, but allow that anger to help you move forward as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you need to talk. Just click on her name on the top of the website. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.